If you've been on the internet at all in the past couple weeks, you may have seen this new concept called MCP. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use MCP servers in Visual Studio Code. And we're going to talk a little bit about what MCP is because it's a little bit confusing. So first of all, you need to have VS Code Insiders at the time of this video. At some point in the future, this will just be part of Visual Studio Code. And then you can add an MP MC MPC MCP server just by going to the command palette here and just type MCP and click add server. Uh, before you do that, you'll probably want to turn on again, at least at the time of this recording, the setting, if you just search for MCP and then this uh, enable discovery of model context protocol servers on this machine. Okay. So that sets you up to go in visual studio code. So let's talk a minute about what MCP actually is. So it does stand for model context protocol, and this is the problem that it solves. So if we have here, let's say we have something like Visual Studio Code here. Okay, so this is VS Code. And then let's say we have something that we want GitHub Copilot and Visual Studio Code to know about. Okay, so it could be anything. Let's say it's a database, but it could be any piece of context. Well, the only way for Visual Studio Code to know about the database is for you to write some sort of integration between the two. And usually this is done with uh, an extension in Visual Studio Code, and that can still be done. But what MCP does is it defines a protocol by which a client like Visual Studio Code can talk to the database. So what is an MCP server? Well, the MCP server, you can imagine it as sort of sitting in the middle or not really in the middle. Maybe here is fine. There's, there's no order to these things, but this is the MCP server. Now what's confusing about this is that they're called servers, but they're actually running on your machine. Okay. So you install this thing on your machine and all this is, is it's a simple program that Visual Studio Code knows how to talk to. It, Visual Studio Code understands this, this MCP API. And then this MCP right here turns around, okay, and it talks to the database and then returns that information back to Visual Studio Code. That's an oversimplification. There's a lot of detail inside of the MCP, the MCP protocol, M MC model context protocol in terms of tools and other things, but at a very simple level, this is how it works. And so you have VS Code, the client, you install the MCP server on your machine. You can then use it from within GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio Code to talk to different things that you didn't have access to before. So again, a little confusing. It will help if we see this in context. So let's do this. Let's just start to build something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up GitHub Copilot. And what we want to do is let's build a game. We're going to build a game. The game is going to be called Fly. And the, the game is literally we're going to play as a fly. Now, you see there's this new button here in Visual Studio Code that says Select Tools. And if you click on this, you see all these tools that you can use. Like you can search your code base or... You can look at the terminal command, terminal last selection. And so what MCP servers do is they add additional tools to this list once you install them. So where do you, where do you get them? You can, at this point, just kind of Google MCP server. This is, I like this one, mcp.so. It seems to be laid out really well. And one of the ones we're going to use today is we're going to use perplexity. Now, if you don't know what perplexity is, let's talk about that real quick. So perplexity is a search engine that is powered by AI. So you ask it a question, it goes out and does the search for you, and then it comes back. And so let me give you an example. Yesterday, I'm at the store. I need a Torx bit to get the seatbelt off so I can replace a part on our minivan. So I ask it, what size Torx bit do I need? And you can see it goes through and it like looks at YouTube videos, and then it comes back and tells me that I need a T50 Torx bit, right? This is super powerful. Now this would be helpful with GitHub Copilot because when you're working with something and it's clear that the model doesn't have the latest information, we can ask Perplexity to give us, search the web and give us the latest information to Copilot so that it can do something. So let's look at this in action. The first thing we need to do is actually install this Perplexity MCP server. 
So let's go over here and then go to content so we can see how to install it here. And you can see that there's sort of two different ways. Um, you can do it as an NPM or NPX package here or as a Docker container. Again, it doesn't matter. They both do the same thing. It's just how do you want to run it on your machine? So in this case, I'm going to choose the Docker container. And what we need here, you know, we could just copy and paste this into Visual Studio Code settings, but we have a UI for doing that. So let's come back here and let's add our MCP server like this. And then we're going to add a Docker image and we're going to paste this in. And then, yes, we want to allow it. This is the name. And then we're going to add it to our user settings. And when we do that, you'll see that we get settings that look almost identical to this over here, right? It's almost identical. It's kind of important here to look at the details. So we're missing some arguments. We need the perplexity API key, right? So we need to actually add that in. Uh, admittedly, this is a bit rough at the moment. As MCP servers get more popular, this will this whole experience will likely get a whole lot better. And then we need our perplexity API. Can you can see here GitHub Copilot? Yeah, it kind of knows. So I'm gonna go grab this and paste it in so you can't see it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've pasted in my perplexity API key and closed the settings so that that's not exposed. So how do you use this thing? Well, let's come over here to the sidebar and then you'll only see these tools in agent mode. So you can see it now it says 10 of 11. It said 10 before. So if we click on this, you'll see now that we have this perplexity MCP server that we can use and it says ask perplexity. So let's just click this. And when we do this, this is going to start the perplexity server sort of in the background. Remember, it's a server, but it's running on my machine. It's just a Docker container running a program that's talking to perplexity so that Copilot doesn't have to know anything about the perplexity API. So now that we've done this, let's give it a prompt. So let's let's see how far we can get here. Let's try this. Create a game using the phaser game engine. The game should be called fly. The point of the game is to control a fly as it moves through a house, avoiding obstacles. The goal is to get from one side of the house to the other, and then you win the game. All right, so it's going to go off and start working here, and let's see what the agent actually does. So it's it's going to go because it knows what phaser is. It's going to go right here and say, I'm going to create a phaser based game called fly. And then it's going to start um, adding all of the items to it. But this isn't exactly what I want. Right? Like I want it to use perplexity. So how do we do that? So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to undo everything here. Let's get rid of this stuff. Let's start over here. And there's a couple of different ways. One of them is that you can just come down and reference the tool directly and say perplexity ask. In my experience, there's something wrong with this at the moment. I usually get an error when I do this. So you can see here, all right. So instead what you can do is you can just kind of tell the the, uh, the AI because this isn't working. This is, that's got to be a bug that will be fixed. You can just say use perplexity. Perplexity? Perplex? perplexity. Why am I having so much trouble with perplexity? I don't know. Use perplexity. Anyway, the AI should be able to go ahead and pick this up now. So it's smart enough to know to use tools. And that's part of the point of MCP servers is that you have a bunch of them installed and then Copilot just uses the tools that it needs. So it's going to run perplexity ask here. You can see it's doing that. And Let's see what perplexity returns that Copilot can actually use here. What I'm hoping it'll do is look at the phaser docs, which have changed quite a bit since the training date for Claude 3.5 Sonnet here. So let's scroll back up while this is working and see what it actually did. So it, it actually asked perplexity, what are the key components and best practices for creating a 2D game in phaser where a family moves through a house avoiding obstacles? And did I say, I said fly, right? Well, we're going to get a family game, apparently. And then this is the response from Perplexity. Here, it's even providing code back to Copilot. Not that Copilot needs that. But then you can see, um, let me zoom out a little bit. These are all of the different things that Perplexity used to get this information, right? So looks like it, this phasereditor2d.com, Wikipedia, phaser discourse group, 
it's looking at uh what does this matter this is the discourse right here i'm just going down and seeing what else it's looking at the swiss bay youtube videos phaser io itself i would hope so it looked at a particular news article it's looking for collision detection it's looking at the github repo for phaser so this is all context that uh, copilot may or may not have depending on the training date of the model so let's go down here and see what's actually happening okay we need to run a terminal command we're running more commands here so it's setting up the application all right so cobalt it's been cooking for a while here and i'll scroll back up and sort of show you what it's been doing um so first of all i said it should be a fly not a family just to get the record straight there uh, and then it went down and it's been doing a lot of things it's been pulling in trying to resolve errors and then it kind of said we were ready and this is what we got which is is not anything so what we want to do here is repair this fix errors and so what i i just want to get these errors fixed I'm, I'm literally just going to say fix the problems so fix problems because you can pass the, the whole problems you in like this and let's actually see what it does here i don't know that it will use perplexity here but let's let's see if it just does on its own it's kind of up to the ai to decide which tools it needs to use and which ones it doesn't depending on what you tell it all right, so we've been cooking for a while again. Let's save all of our files and it says that we're ready to run. I don't know if that's true. I see an error, but let's give it a try. Uh, let's see here. How do I, how do we run this game? Let's go to the package. Looks like it's NPM start. I wonder if I have to NPM run build first. And then let's start it up and see what actually happens. All right, so we have another error, so we just pass it back in again. So we've still got an error, so let's just pass it back in. And we can actually just take and drag and drop the the problems here and say, uh, and just say fix. All right, so it's done again. Let's go ahead and keep all of the changes here, which is a good idea when using agent mode. It's just been really busy doing all kinds of things, fixing errors, properly adding the phaser import. It phaser import. It didn't use perplexity again, hasn't used it again. But again, the more tools you have, the more things Copilot can need if it needs to use them. So let's actually see what we've got here. Start game. Um, use arrow keys to fly. I mean, it's a it's a two D game, <laughs> and it's using shapes. Uh, but, but there you go. And if you hit something, you start over. And if you get to the other side, do you win freedom? There you go. So that's a very brief introduction to how to use MCP servers today in visual studio code. Remember you do need insiders and you know, you've got insiders if the icons green, and then you do need to go to settings, just search for MCP and just come on to enable discovery of model context protocol. And then if you're looking for MCP servers, you can go to uh, which the one I use is mcp.so. And there's a bunch of them in there, including things like databases, all kinds of stuff. That's how you use MCP servers today in Visual Studio Code. And uh, I hope that it's a little less confusing for you and you can use them to do all kinds of amazing things with AI. It's definitely the future. Thanks for watching.